So my life with music began because of my mother. She was the ultimate tiger mom. <laughs> yes, her life mission was make me a virtuoso pianist. So I practiced so much. I practiced eight to 10 hours a day, before school, after school, sometimes taken out of school entirely, just so that I could practice more. Because I had this talent, this gift, I thought I had to be perfect. So this is me um, performing at my very first concert at age five, before my feet could even <laughs> touch the ground. And this is me and my mom <laughs> after the concert. There's my mom watching my every move. <laughs> And there's me, uh, already a little diva, trying to pose in front of camera. You know, and then it's all about winning competition. You gotta be the best. First prize only. Second prize, not good enough. So this is about my, one of my first competition. I, as you could tell, that's me. Um, <laughs> not the face of first prize winner, no. Second prize winner standing next to the first prize winner and her boyfriend. <laughs> you, know how, you know how sad I look? I mean, seriously, I was so sad. So the fierce competitor that I was, what did I do? I stole her boyfriend. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, as a young pianist, your life is all about being judged in a competition compared to others, and worst case, criticized for your performance. So your whole selfish and self-esteem shaped by this very competitive nature. Growing up, I had some very serious personal issues. I had eating disorder. I was bulimic. I would stuff my empty self with food just so that I could throw it all up. But you know, once on my birthday, I actually ate the whole entire cake by myself. And then I had this weird habit too, like I would pull out my hair while I'm practicing, so a big chunk of my hair would just fall, on, fall onto the keyboard. And then I would scratch myself so hard until I bleed. I guess I felt so numb inside that I wanted to feel something. And it was all my dark secret. I kept it from everyone. My parents didn't know. And I felt so ashamed. So by high school, I had some serious issues. And this is me at 16. Um, yes, not a happy camper. Um, honestly, I thought I burned all my pictures around this time. But of course, my husband found it. <laughs> and he's going, is this like your heavy metal phase or something? <laughs> So when I got to Juilliard, um, you know, my life as a pianist defined who I was. The feelings of my self-worth totally depend on whether audience liked about my playing or, you know, competition judges liked about my playing or my teachers liked my playing. So on a good day, with a good performance, it was fleeting. I'm going, did they really like me? Did they really like me? You know, leaving me with self-doubt. But on a bad day, oh, I felt like I was nothing. I wanted to just hide under a rock and just never come out and disappear. I felt completely inadequate. You know, life of a pianist, 99% of the time, you would spend all alone in the practice room. For that 1% of the time where you're under the spotlight in front of thousands of people on stage where you need to execute. So I thought gifted music was me measuring up to the standard of perfection on stage. You know, it's all about mastering the music with thousands of notes in my head, you know, executing every single note perfectly, technically and artistically. But you know, you can't be perfect all the time. It's just not possible. You can't get 100%. So what was supposed to be a gift was almost like a curse. And it became this prison that let me fill with this emptiness, self-doubt, and complete insecurity. But then, I had this revelation that changed me. It started with my faith. 
And it wasn't like overnight transformation that happened. It was a real awakening that helped me lift out of this prison. It happened when I went to Honduras on a mission trip uh, with my husband. My mother-in-law is a missionary, and she retired as a nurse, and she decided to go to Honduras to help out the poor community with medical treatment. So her organization asked me to play a Christmas concert. So I treat it like any other concert. I prepare a Bach, Beethoven, or Handel to show off my chops. <laughs> yeah. But then when I got there, it was not at all what I expected. It wasn't like the beautiful cathedral, what I imagined in my mind. It was like this place out of nowhere. And there was no grand piano, not even a piano, just an electric keyboard. And the most surprising thing was that the church congregation was 80% children. And what I learned later on is that this place, this church, is essentially shelter and school for these kids while parents were working. So this is the picture of Honduras. So I went right into classical pieces, you know, and children were amazing. They were really listening attentively, really enjoying music. But then when I started to play Christmas music, when I play Silent Night, they started singing in Spanish. It was so beautiful. You know, these kids were so poor, some had no shoes, they're visually sick. But when they were singing, they sounded like angels. So at that moment, when we're making this music together, there was this joy and hope and life, and we were truly one in music. So you see, all my life, my thinking was that I was trapped in this thinking that ma music has to be mastered. But then I realized that music meant to be served to bring hope and joy and life to others. You know, it's not about being perfect, it's not about you, it's about how you make others feel uplifted and inspire and touch people's heart. So this led to my road to recovery, to thinking differently about music and helped me lift out of this prison. About four years ago, I was given a greatest blessing of my life. I had my son, Max. I had a very traumatic delivery. I almost died. And when you face with this very traumatic experience of nearly dying yourself and losing your baby, your whole life perspective changes. You know, I was so sick that I couldn't nurse my baby. I had numerous infections. I was so sick. I had high fever all the time, and wound infection so severe that I couldn't sit or even bathe myself. So thank God for my mom. She came and she just took care of my baby while my husband nurtured me back to life. What kept me going around this time was this love that I felt all around, but I, what I really, truly longed for was just to be able to play music again because I wasn't able to, I couldn't sit. And I'm thinking how I took it for granted to be able to play this God's gift to humanity, this music, that's a gift to self. So this, you know, when my heart and my mind renew at the point that physically at my weakest, and I was so sick in bed, but I was feeling so grateful just to be alive. I wanted to do something. I wanted to give back because I have this life. So I'm happy to say that Max is doing great. Um, here's his Max's recent picture. Happy boy with his daddy. Um, he's happy boy now because his mommy is healthier and happier person. After going through this traumatic delivery and everything, um, you know, I felt so grateful that I wanted to give back. I wanted to do something. So I had my other baby. I found the charity, Hong Kong Generation Next Arts. Our mission is to support and nurture our next generation of young artists. Because we've been, I've been there, I know how tough it is to face all this fierce competition and lonely hours of practicing. I just want to say that, you know, it's okay. 
when your performance may not be your best or doesn't have to be perfect, just as you are. I want to just root for their you know, passion and dedication for this incredibly gifted young artist. So here is HKGNA um, presenting a New York Carnegie Hall debut for Hong Kong's excellent young artists. You know, New York debut Carnegie Hall is like dream come true for any young artist. We call this concert from Hong Kong with love. And our young artists were all wonderful, fantastic. It was a great success. And we make sure that we didn't just feature the first prize winner, but all prize winners. And, um, you know, with a standing ovation from the audience, again, we're connected through music and we became one in music. We felt so much love from the New York audience. So shortly after um, I found the charity, I met a friend of mine um, introduced me to Jackie Pullinger. You know, Jackie is a famous missionary figure in Hong Kong. Um, she now is a pastor of my church. She's truly my role model and my mentor. You know, she was a musician too. She graduated from Royal College of Music in England as an oboe player. And in her 20s, um, she came to Hong Kong and went into this notorious Kowloon Wall City. It's like the ha haven for criminals and drug addicts and prostitution. And she helped them got off the drugs. Um, and 50s to 80s, it was completely ruled by triads. And she saved their lives. She's truly amazing woman of faith. So when Jackie um, asked me to teach her boys from St. Stephen's, she's the founder of St. Stephen's Society. You know, I was feeling pretty scared or reluctant, say the least, because St. Stephen's Society is the rehab center for ex-drug addicts, ex-gangsters, and troubled youth. So when she asked me, I was having this inner struggle because, I mean, seriously, at that time, I just got over my traumatic delivery. I had my seven-month-old baby, and I was still feeling sick from my infections. So when she asked me, I was having this inner conflict in my head. I'm thinking, okay, um, you know, I, I'm feeling so grateful. I wanted to give back, but do I need to go that far? I mean, seriously, <laughs> do I need to go that far? I, I you know, I, I don't know, with tough kids, um, it, yeah, and, uh, I don't even teach beginners. I mean, really. So I'm going, gratefulness, fear. You know, sharing your gift, fear, try it. You know, I'm like, I, <laughs> but then I say yes. And when I'm, of course, when I met the boys, there's this kid with a dragon tattoo watching me like this, staring me down. But I mean, but honestly, most of the kids, uh, my boys, were very nice and gentle. So you know, they have no musical background whatsoever. Most never even touched the piano. So I started out teaching where the C note is, how to put the finger on the keyboard. And a few months went by, and we started to connect. Um, you know, because when you teach music, you can't just teach them how to play an instrument. You gotta share your heart, you gotta share your music, you gotta really, you know, see how they are, truly connect. And then I saw them changing, and I was changing too. And I start to see transformation in these boys' lives. And you know that kid that used to scare me? He became one of my very favorite. He's so gentle and so genuine. And then I realized I'm not so different from them. They feel insecure and empty and self-doubt and lonely, just like I was. I saw myself in them. We were the same. So within six months, they play this Christmas concert. They play Bach and Beethoven. It was amazing. I mean, truly, I was so proud of them. So I formed this program called Musical Angel Programs um, for underprivileged and uh, disadvantaged youth. And here are my musical angels celebrating second Christmas together. All my boys are truly special, but I'd like to share with you one incredible young man named Sun Min. There is Sun. Um, Sun was a runaway. Uh, he ran away from home when he was 12. Uh, and social worker took him to the St. Stephen's. And he had problem following things through. Um, he didn't finish high school 
only had like a couple months left to go and he didn't finish. So when I first met him, um, he wasn't the most musical one. He was actually, musically speaking, one of the worst ones. <laughs> because he had this like awkward hands and fingers. Um, but then three months, something was happening. Um, he became the sponge that absorbing everything that I was playing and doing. But the most incredible thing is he had this focus that the only trained classical musicians had. So what I learned from my journey so far is that true gift of music for me is to understand that it is a gift. That how I don't need to measure up or be perfect, but just like any other gift, just receive it, be grateful, and share it with others. So I want to share my heart, share my music, share all of me with this gift. So everyone has a gift. I hope you find it and use it. Share with others. Touch people's lives. And change their lives by sharing your gift. So I'd like to leave you with a musical gift um, Introducing Sun Wim. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. God bless.